Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews. This is going to be my review and recap for David Makes Man Season 2, Episode 6. <sighs> okay, I listen. I've gotten some reactions to this episode from El Teddy and Really B. I haven't seen it yet. <sighs> Please don't screw this up. This is Saren's episode. Please don't. Oh God. We've been screaming, where is Saren? Since he got into that car 15 years ago. <sighs> Please don't mess this up. Let's go. Why does Saren look like he's 75 in the face? Baby, what you been through? In this time that you've been missing. Cause you look like you've been through some things. You know how people always say, I don't look like what I've been through. You look like so. Their meeting was cute. It automatically switched them to the younger versions of themselves, which did my heart good. And then David said, where you been? I've been looking for you. And he was like, he uses his dad's last name. He was like, that's why I couldn't find you. He was like, you was looking? He was like, hell yeah, I was looking for you. And then the stupid nephew of the mob man, Mr. Padilla's nephew, come up and he was like, David, you got to come inside and see what's going on. And he was like, don't you just See me standing here having a conversation he was like okay and so they still continue to have like small talk getting to know you where you been how you doing and he was like david i know you are in the middle of a conversation and i might even low-key be a little bit of jealous but you need to come inside and then so david's like don't go anywhere i'll be right back and he walks off and little siren is there so literally, all hell is breaking loose before this damn, oh, before this thing can get started. So there's an issue with the lady who's setting up everything. Luckily, Saren comes in and speaks Creole to her and get her on her good side so she'll do whatever they need to get done. Because Elon, the nephew, is useless. Um, and then he goes, Elon is like, um... We don't even know if Mr. Padilla is coming. What you mean? This whole shit. This whole thing. Is his situation. So why wouldn't he be here? That makes no sense. Then. um, The. Man over the commission. Shows up. Lord. David said some crazy shit to this man. He was like. like what do we got to do to bribe you to to go with this we got to give seventy five thousand dollars to this fake chair so of course that conversation didn't actually happen because that would be too real so he's schmoozing the man they shaking hands all that good stuff and he says to david that the man made him the black face of his uh i guess mayoral run or whatever's happening is so uh, of, of of the the project and he's like how does it feel and he was like, well, how does it feel to represent the most racist people, constituents in the United States? Pretty much the same, right? <laughs> and so the man, I guess, got offended. And he was like, did you want to, and Dave was like, do you want to discuss the signing off on the project? And he was like, "When I'll talk to the man, the, the man Mr. Padilla, when he get here, let me know when he's here. I said, oh, Jesus. And now Marissa is here with a bearded dragon. So you mean to tell me that Marissa read David the riot act for not knowing where Saren was. And she knew where Saren She knew where Saren was this whole time. So Saren is a lobbyist. And she, Marissa is the... First of all, Marissa's at the party with a live bearded dragon. Like, I don't... Girl, daughter, what? Okay. Okay. When did Saren become um, Latin? Is my next question. Because he's not giving me. Okay. I'm just gonna... Okay. So Mr. Padilla make... shows up to start the party, I guess. And he does all of this. Call it out. Who's here? And we want to do all of it.
maybe I'm not. This is really complicated. Like, I just, like, I feel like it's too much happening. Everybody has a game. And I don't know anyone's end goal. So I'm confused as to what is really going on. And then the nephew, after the uncle did the song and dance, and then read David the Riot Act, talk about, and this is the man you want to make the mayor of Miami. All right. <laughs> okay, so JG gets there. He says that there's a man outside trying to charge him extra for parking and stuff. So David is like, okay, I'm on my way out to see what's going on. And so Shayla, he runs into Shayla. She was like, you told me this is a town hall meeting. So he's small talk and share talk about you look beautiful come here in any way jg wants you to be here blah bloom blue blue so here comes jg jg is like the man out front is like trying to charge me extra to park and he has a cardboard sign that looks suspect and david's like what he's like, and so he runs out to go see what's happening and jg and shayla have a conversation and he she was like you ready for your big speech and he was like yeah david was like just say a couple words and take the money and run he's like but she was like why you feel like you want to say something different he was like i didn't at first but now i feel like i want to say something different he about to torpedo this whole shit david gonna have to do some magic to i can feel it coming in my bones and then here comes trish looking very nice in this pretty pink dress and so Shayla and, and Trish are throwing daggers across JG. So and, Trish and Shayla are throwing daggers across JG. David shows up and he was like, okay, ladies, have you met Shayla? This is Trish, this is Shayla. And it was like, yeah, oh, she clearly she's in good with both the brothers. Ooh, don't do that, daughter. Don't, we, do, we don't have to do that. And so it's, it's super tense. David's like, ladies, let me get you seated so JG can do his speech and he ushers them into the ballroom and jg is like you don't have them sitting next to each other do you he was like hell no. <laughs> hell no I was, that thing took me i'm sorry it was funny to me jesus he like i'm stupid but i'm not that you know i'm listen i'm playing a lot of games but that game that game that's not what i'm doing today <laughs> That happened. So, um, David and JG are backstage, and JG is trying to figure out what it is that he wants to say. Um, David is like, just take the money, say thank you, and walk off. That's, that's all I need you to do. And so he was like, I, he's like, he's like, JG, are you okay? He's like, nigga, I got shot. <laughs> he was like, are you in pain? He was like, N sometimes. He's like, but sometimes it's just thinking about it. The, the look on the kid's face when he shot me he was like he was scared and he was just wanted to pe get the people off him he was like yeah that's what everybody always says that they were scared he was like why would he carry a gun if not to shoot it and then he was like you and I never carried no gun so JG gets up there he gives a lovely thank you speech he thanks everybody he says he's the reason he, he loved the veal he hasn't lived there since he was 12 but he continues to go back because, to check on the thing. He says that the money that the un police union raised to give to him, he's going to donate it to the Shalimar's defense fund because the bill gave him a chance at life and he wants to do the same for the young man that shot him. And then he walks off. Everybody's looking like, uh, what? Okay. Uh, I I don't know if are we supposed to clap for this? Like, I don't know. I don't I feel like this just put a bomb into everything. And I feel like people are going to start yelling at David now. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so a lot just happened. So they, uh, 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 David goes to confront JG about his speech and give him the money back. He's like, you had one motherfucking job, nigga. One job. And they get into this huge conversation in the bathroom about how... He, David, never understood JG's choice. So, um, 
David said he needed to see J that JG was a lot live living. He said alive or living or something. And he's like, what do you mean? What do, he's like, no, repeat that. He's like, I needed to see you. Do, 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 do. He's like, no, you want, you needed to see me alive. He was like, yes. He was like, I never understood your choice to become the police. And this whole time, your whole entire career. He's like, first he said, you act like you don't mean anything to me. He was like, your entire career, I have been preparing myself with what ifs with you being a cop of something happening to you. And when mama called me to tell me that you were shot, I still wasn't ready. And so he's like, I'm alive and I'm good, day. But you um, dangling me in front of these people. You dangling me in front of these people to get whatever you trying to do off the ground is not it. And it was a real moment of emotion and actually David saying what he was thinking and not actually, you know, having a hallucination of what he wants to say and then recalibrating and saying what he thinks he needs to say. When their conversation is over, Saren comes out of the bathroom, bath, a bathroom stall, and so does the nephew. And the nephew, Achilles, had been snorting coke. I don't know if they were in the stall together. I don't know. So they come out of the bathroom. JG, Mr. Padilla doesn't say anything crazy to JG. He's like, you're, he, I guess they spoke. He's like, you're a good young man. And they shake hands and walk off. He's so, like, um, Mr. Padilla says to David, your brother, he's a good, he's a good kid. A little, not misguided, he said naive, but he's a good kid. He was like, we need, I you, I need you to do whatever it is that you need to do to get the police union on our side. Because right now they're back in your brother's Black Panther, blah, blah, blah. It's Black Panther, how do we even get to the Black, okay, never mind. Um, and while he's reading David the Riot Act, the nephew is sitting there giggling because David is in trouble. He smacked the taste out of that fool's mouth. Oh, Jesus. I said, oh, 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 and told him, you think that the police union going to be on my side when they catch my nephew all coming out of the bathroom, powdered up like a newborn baby? Get your shit together. <laughs> he does get himself together. And he said, David, fix this. So he is telling David, Fix this shit. I, the result, the end result that we want, I still want it for doing all of this bullshit. So get it together. Then Saren and David have a conversation. They have one of their wordless conversations where the writing is on the wall. And it was just two sentences. And it was like, Saren was like, so what are you going to do? And he was like, I'll think of something. And then Saren has a bunch of question marks around him. And then David has a bunch of exclamation marks around him as he walks away. Child. First of all, the fact that they still have that connection where they have wordless conversations, chef's kiss. Um, when did Saren turn into a 60-year-old Latin man? I don't know. But hopefully we can get some answers. Okay, so the county commissioner is... It talk about the silent auction. And so while he's talking on stage about the silent auction and raising money for the schools, uh, he gets a piece of paper from the nephew saying that Miss P PA Associates will match all of the donations for the silent auction. And if they exceed their goal by 10000 he'll double match it, which is Indeed, just a bribe. And so he looks at and sees David off to the side. And David nods his head at the man and they meet behind stage. And he was like, that was a neat trick that you pulled. He's like, did it work? He's like, yeah. And so the commissioner says, I'm not going to eat, just eat from the crumbs from Joe Padilla's table. He's like, you can't get a seat. You're on the commission. He was like, he gives him this card for a surveyor. And he was like, I have access to contractors, architects, all, the, all black owned, all certified to work for the state. And he was like, 
so they're yes. all zoned to work on commercial businesses because the man still thinks that they're going to put them all there. And so he was like, and with you being on the residential board, there's no conflict of interest. He was like, no. And he was like, and you have controlling interest in these companies? He was like, well, we're all, they're all black owned, so we're all family. He's like, everybody's family except you and me, David. And he was like, mm -hmm. I see. I, he gonna have to do, this is becoming even more complicated because now it's never going to be a commercial thing. So I don't know how he gonna end run around this commissioner. I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, so, oh, 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 God. So, Shayla's getting ready to leave. And he was like, come back in. There's something I really want you to hear because they about to do the switch from tenant into a mall into housing. And so, they, so he was like, he can't be on anything residential because he'll get kickbacks and blah, 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 blah. And so he goes and gives this, he goes, he's walking in and he is like, they pass, Shayla and David pass Marissa, who's making out with the little news reporter man. And Shayla's like, you just do it anywhere, just anywhere but a bed, girl. And she was like, y'all come in, we about to finish up. And she was like, you come in. And he was like, get the fuck back in there. Stop acting like a child. I was like, oh. Not put the girl in check while another nigga is actively okay. So he goes in and he makes a speech about and begs Mr. Padilla. This was their their thing all along. He begs Mr. Padilla, you know, to not build the mall and and put up and he shows his plans and everything. And everybody's like and Miss and he agrees. Um, everybody's so, clapping and stuff except for Shayla. Shayla's like, so y'all just buying this bullshit. This is what we do okay fine she's like because she knows it's not going to be she she's not stupid she knows she knows what it is everybody else is clapping and is happy that david is making this change and he begged risked his job to beg him to change it to a mall and blah 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 and so um saren is like okay that's what we're doing all right all right we haven't spent nearly enough time with saren Not nearly enough. I don't even know how I feel about this. Um, so David and Saren are having a conversation. Marissa comes up being Marissa. Talk about it. If you ever talked about me like that again, I'm get girl, go sit down. Fuck the reporter. Nobody's talking. So David and Saren have this conversation and they kind of get into it a little bit and he was and they i feel like and sarah they they leave and it's not resolved but it's it's they kind of clashed a little bit and so david put takes his jacket off and he goes outside and saren is outside smoking and then they really get into the heart of what is being un what is unspoken in between them. And David is like, what happened to you? He's like, I looked for you. He was like, I thought I did the wrong thing. And Saren was like, I had to wait. He was like, um, they, he used to talk about his parents. The home he was living with his mama and that crazy stepdaddy. He was like, they was never going to do right by me. And so I just had to wait. I had to wait. I went to, he was yes, like, but you were alone. And he was like, no, I was with my dad for a little while. And he's like, he's like, why didn't you reach out? He was like, cause I was scared and I didn't want to get anybody in trouble. And he was like, I was alone. And then I was a kid alone on my own. And I had to wait until I was 17. And so Sarah says, thank you. Cause you saved me. And he was like, he, and and David is like all this time I've been wondering and, and and looking for you, and he was like, and now you know why you couldn't find me, and so they get the sprinklers come on and they get into this tussle. They start play fighting with each other. It morphs into the younger versions of themselves, and then David says, uh, "Get me out of here. Take me with you." He's like, "I'll follow you anywhere. You are my friend." You are my only friend. And, and he's like, um, 
I would follow you anywhere. And, and Sharon was like, okay. He's like, are you ready? You still stay ready, David? And he was like, and they was like, let's go. And then they walked off and that's how the episode ended. Uh, I would just like to say the sprinkler scene with Sharon and David as their younger selves. I'm, I'm going to get into my L Teddy bag was very moonlight. Are they, aren't they, are they about to do something? Was David jealous because Sharon was in the bathroom with Elon and that's why he was so giving him so much fever earlier. Talk about, I sent your little friend home and I don't know. I feel like even though David is in relation with this girl, I think that's because he think that's what he's supposed to do. I truly, I truly feel, 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 I feel, I truly feel like Saren is David's person. His, for uh, lack of a better word, his soulmate, his, that's who, that is the other side of his coin. So, um, that's what it gave me. I don't know. I could be off base. I, it's not a familial, um, fraternal feeling like he has with JG. This feels very much soul matey to me that's what it feels like like i like saren is is the love of david's life like that's what it's giving me i could be wrong but i have so many more questions about what is happening where are they going are they going to be together in the traditional sense uh like is, is david ready to take that step into actually being who he is how is that going to affect the trauma that he's gone through and all of his coping mechanisms that he's built up is he gonna I, like i have so many i have so many questions i have so many questions is saren like does saren feel the same way though i think he does i like i don't know i don't know i don't know Hopefully we explored more. Um, I'm giving this a chance because um, I don't like the little boy who's playing the grown-up Saren. He, when did Saren turn into a 55-year-old Latin man who smokes cools in the pack? I don't know. It's just, okay, but I'm going to look past that because for the storytelling and try to figure out what but that was my review and recap for david makes man please like comment and subscribe tell a friend to tell a kin and i'll catch you in the next one peace